Okay, before I start, welcome to Kane Touch This. I'm just going to show off my Clerks collection. Clerks is my favourite film. So before I start this video entitled Clerks 3, I hope it doesn't suck. I just want to show a few of my things off. So I have the screenplay for the original Clerks. It's uh, unsigned or anything, but if I do ever see Kevin, hopefully I'll, Mr. Smith, hopefully I'll get this signed. I have the Blu-ray steelbook cover. This was, I don't know, limited to like 2,000 copies or something. It has the same extras as all the other releases uh, from Clerks X onwards. I have the Clerks 2 screenplay, also unsigned. I have Clerks 2 on DVD. I don't have any DVDs anymore, but for some reason I can't seem to get rid of this. I guess sentimentality. I'm a Jeff Anderson fan, primarily, really. I think he makes the films. Not literally. I think he his presence in the film is just uh, what makes it really great. So I have his directorial film here. Uh, it also stars Trevor Fairman, who played Elias in Clerks 2 and Clerks 3. That's where Kevin Smith found him as an actor through uh, Jeff's film. I also have Tales from the Clerks, so this is just a... Uh, it collects the Clerks comics book, comic books as well as Chasing Dogma, which bridges the gap between Chasing Amy and Dogma. It has uh, Where's the Beef, which is uh, original to this collection as well. And I also have uh, the late Lisa Spoonhour's autograph here. So these were uh, trading card packs that had some autograph copies. I bought this with this. So this is the Clerks X DVD and it's signed by, you got Jason Mewes, Kevin Smith, Brian O'Halloran, Jeff Anderson and Marilyn Gigliotti. And this was quite expensive, but Clerks is my favorite film. And despite how angry my wife was at the amount I paid for it, uh, I think it was worth it, maybe. Anyway, on with the video. So I used to think I was a Kevin Smith fan, but really I'm just a Clerks fan. I know there are a lot of people who live and breathe Kevin Smith's content, but that's not me. I'm strictly a fan of Clerks, so I won't be mentioning the fan reaction to He-Man or anything like that because I'm not the audience for that and I don't care about it. It will be just mainly my experience with his film output. I don't care about podcasts or comic book men or any of that. And if you do, then that's great and I hope you enjoy them. I might be spoiling some things in the film, so that's something to be aware of too. Clerks is my all-time favourite film, and I say that as someone who spots every single slight line flub or happy scrappy hero pup continuity error. I don't even know why I like it so much. I think a lot of it has to do with the story of the film's production, which I'm sure pretty much everyone knows by now. If you don't, look it up, it's a great story. But I also believe it's uh, because of things like how it's in black and white with a very small, uneventful story, and it feels like it shouldn't have travelled any further than Kevin Smith's circle of friends. I can't really sufficiently explain it, but the film's really special. I first watched it a decade after it came out on the Clerks X DVD. So on that DVD there was a documentary called Snowball Effect, which is a great name, and that detailed, retroactively, the making of the film. It had tons of bonus content as well with commentaries and audition footage, MTV shorts, it had the Soul Asylum music video that takes place on the roof of the quick stop. And it had the great flying car short too, which I think was from The Tonight Show. I just fell in love with it, warts and all. Clerks 2 came out a few years later and I closely followed the production through the making of a train wreck videos online. And when the film was released, I was really satisfied. Your mileage may vary, but I thought it was a brilliant follow up. It was another day in the life of Randall and Dante and it managed to progress the characters without boiling them down to a stereotype, you know, without flanderising them. I remember Smith showed Tarantino the film and Tarantino said it was just good to see the characters hanging out again and he thought the film became a real film once it hit the jail cell scene. I tend to agree. So the jail cell scene is where Randall has to open up about what it's going to be like to lose Dante and how he has his dream of owning the quick stop. I don't want to go on and on about it too much but basically the sequel, it has a lot more broad comedy in it which I'm not huge on, you know, with thin, things like the donkey show and how exaggerated uh, Elias is. And also, Jay and Silent Bob are in it slightly more than I'd like. Still a hell of a lot less than other Viewersk Universe films, but I think it was a fine send-off for the characters. 
It brought them back to the start of them working at the quick stop, but learning of how much they meant to each other, actually owning something together, and Dante gets the girl and has a child on the way. Dante finally shit and got off the pot. The soundtrack was pretty awesome too. After Clerks 2, I watched Zack and Miri, and I genuinely cannot remember anything about it. Uh, except, okay, except the parallels between making a film where you work and how Kevin Smith's career started that way. I wasn't interested in the new direction with Red State, so I haven't seen that, but I am happy he made it. I wouldn't want to watch him film a script that wasn't his, as his direction has never been great, so I won't bother with Cop Out. Uh, the behind the scenes stuff with Bruce Willis is hilarious though. Tusk I haven't seen for similar reasons to Red State, and I think I'm way more likely to see Red State than a film about a fake online ad that became a podcast in joke. If you like that, that's fine. I can't really judge it because I haven't seen it. It's just not for me. I also tried to watch Yoga Hoses, but I couldn't get through the whole thing. I thought it was awful. The humour was garbage and everyone in the film deserved better. Maybe the third act was so good that it salvaged what preceded it, but probably not. Oh yeah, I forgot Jersey Girl. Shit. I think the rest of the planet did as well, so, you know, I might give Jersey Girl a go one day. So that just leaves Jane Silent Bob reboot and Strike Back. I always thought Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back was terrible. The concept was interesting. You know, we'd get to see Dante and Randall, Brody and Banky, Holden, you know, among others from all the other films. I think Alyssa even turns up. But the humour doesn't land for me. Getting stoned with the cast of Scooby-Doo and having an orangutan companion is all a bit too dumb for me. I can enjoy silly humour, but I don't think that's what the previous films were. They were completely different tonally. It just seemed like an excuse to have endless, unfunny cameos, but yeah, I didn't like Reboot. I thought it was like a worse version of Strike Back, but it also felt a lot cheaper. So yeah, in Reboot, I like the guy, don't get me wrong, but Jay just doesn't look right since he got the new teeth. And the father-daughter story with him in the film just doesn't have the emotional punch it was going for. The running gag of Silent Bob using emojis is just the ultimate in cringe. The only part I like is that it turns out it was Jay and Bob all along, that have been putting gum in the quick stop lock, but even that's a joke that relies on my affinity for the original. So then here we are then. Finally, the main point of the video. Clerks 3, I hope it doesn't suck. I'll just go over some points that worry me and some things that make me more hopeful, or maybe just one point that makes me hopeful. Anyway, the production itself has me worried. The film is a long time coming. It was originally cancelled in 2017 because the guy who played Randall The legend that is Jeff Anderson just didn't want to do it. I trust his thoughts when it comes to Clerks films because I know it took a long time to get him on board with Clerks 2 and if he didn't want to do the third one because of the script, maybe the new script is why he's on board with Clerks 3. So that's a positive. A few of the elements from Jane Silent Bob reboot were originally in the now discarded Clerks 3 script so that doesn't bode well. A scene in particular being the burning weed store standoff with the police where Jay does the Buffalo Bill goodbye horses impression, you know, which was totally off for a Clerks film and which was more damning, just unfunny. Other elements in the Clerks 3 script I've heard through the grapevine include Randall running a pop-up quick stop store outside a cinema while people waiting line for a Ranger Danger film. Randall and Dante not being friends. Dante dying of cancer. Rosario Dawson's character Becky being murdered in a robbery gone wrong that is partially Jay and Silent Bob's fault somehow. Dante not bonding with his own daughter who likes Randall more. All these story beats suck in my opinion and if any of it is retained then my interest is diminished accordingly. Another issue I have is the new plot. I get the parallels with Kevin Smith's heart attack and I'm really happy that he overcame his health issues and is much healthier nowadays. However, Randall having the heart attack doesn't ring true to me. Of the two leads, Dante looks more like the type to drop to the floor after a coronary incident. I think the heart attack is only given to Randall in the plot because Kevin feels like it's time that Randall leads the story. It's a nitpick, but it's an issue that I have nonetheless. The plot's whole outline bothers me. Clerk's Sellout was going to be a feature film version of the animated series and it's recycled here. It works on a meta level in an animated series, I believe, but I don't know if it translates well to a live action film. Also, Zack and Miri has basically the same premise. Some people decide to make films where they work. It's like a recycling of a recycling of a recycling. The next issue is returning cast. So who do we need for a Clerks film? Well, we need Dante and we need Randall. And at a push, we need Jay and Silent Bob. Those last two were inevitably going to be in it, but I don't believe they would have to be, but I'm fine that they are. 
Do we need Elias from Clerks 2? Well, he got a job there at the end of the last one, and re- he really seems like he's never grown up, so okay, fine. I like Trevor Fairman too, so it's all good. Rosario Dawson's Becky? Well, she married or was going to marry Dante and was pregnant with his kid, so of course, if they can get Rosario, that's fine. Who don't we need? Well, we don't need Smith's wife in it again. She was the worst part, like... Hands down, she was the worst part of Clerks 2, but it worked for that film because she was meant to be someone we didn't root for. We wanted Dante to stay and be with the girl he was more suited to. We didn't want him dragged away from his friends and his home for a life that doesn't mean anything with this irritating woman. So why the hell is Emma in Clerks 3? How can they possibly write a reason for her to be in there that isn't that the director wants his wife in the movie? Another issue is, is Kevin Smith's daughter going to be in it? She played Jay's daughter in Reboot, and well, Jay has a daughter now, so you'd think she'd be around, unless it's set before. Anyway, she was an irritating character, and I think that character would drag the film down. I believe Smith's daughter's boyfriend's in the film, so that's another thing that bothers me. I just think the more you open up the world of Clerks, the more you lose what makes Clerks great, and that's a small-scale story that focuses on its two main characters. So my next point then, who's not in the film? Well, Dave Klein did the cinematography for Clerks 1 and 2 and Kevin specifically stated he wouldn't make another film without him. I mean, he has over and over again, but, you know, we do all make promises we can't keep. Sometimes people are too expensive or want to do their own thing, and I understand that. Either way, he's a huge part of the look of Clerks, and I think his absence will be felt. I'm also not sure if Scott Mosier will have anything to do with the film either. He was the producer of all of Kevin Smith's movies up until Zack and Miri, and he appears in most of them. He's a huge part of Clerks anyway, and it would be good to see him, even if it's briefly. It'd be like him giving the film his blessing, I don't know. He actually co-directed the last Grinch film, so he's probably too busy now, his star is on the rise. Okay, so this is running long now, so the last thing I'll mention is age combined with the roles in the film. People get old, that's life, but when people get older, they change. My friend and I, we used to wear flat caps all the time when we were about 16, But now I'm 34, I look back and cringe at what a couple of dorks we were. Can you imagine if you and a friend hung outside a store selling drugs like 25 years ago and then present day, you're now in your 50s, you're still standing outside the same store every day with that same friend wearing the same style of clothes. Neither of you have partners or professions, no. You're still dressing the same with your backwards hat and your trench coat. I can suspend my disbelief at the lack of character progression, but there does come a point where it just feels sad and... I think I've just reached that point now. So a friend of mine, Andy, sent me a TikTok video that inspired me to make this. It was a behind the scenes clip from Clerks 3, and it was a shot for shot remake of Jay and Silent Bob's introduction from the original film. Jay even has the same shirt on. It concerned me. It made me think this could be a film where Dante keeps finding any excuse to say, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Or Marilyn Gigliotti's Veronica just jumps around the corner saying, 37, while a laugh track plays. It's just, I just really hope this film doesn't suck. I'm going to watch the film the instant it's available, and I hope it's a worthy successor. If I don't like it, then it's not going to ruin the other two. Well, I hope not anyway. I'm the kind of person who watches the despecialized edition of the original Star Wars trilogy and can ignore the deluge of crap that came afterwards, but the Clerk series is something really near and dear to me, so who knows? Who cares what I think anyway? To quote Randall Graves, I hate everything. And everyone seems stupid to me.